Now, I understand that the topics that we're discussing today, whether it be the attempted assassination of President Trump, whether it is Tulsi Gabbard being put on the terror watch list, whether it's what we're about to talk about, which is police call logs actually prove that Biden had a medical emergency when he was in Las Vegas just days before this coup that was staged against him. It can make it feel like they, this nebulous they, are out to get us. And that's not my intention to portray the events of modern American politics in that way. However, what I am committed to on the show, which I know you appreciate, we have talked about this many times, is challenging every assumption. And part of challenging every assumption is letting the facts dictate the narrative of the story, not coming to these stories with a preconceived idea of what they mean. And so when we look at this next story, I'm gonna show you this video. I want you to listen to this very closely because these are the call logs from when Joe Biden was in Las Vegas, he was supposed to speak in an event. The event was abruptly canceled. Biden was rushed back to the East Coast. And you remember, we talked about this on the show two weeks ago. Charlie Kirk reported just days after that there was a massive cover-up that was happening, that Joe Biden had actually suffered a serious medical emergency in Las Vegas. He didn't just test with mild COVID symptoms and he was going back to Delaware to quarantine that something much more serious was actually happening, that hospitals in Las Vegas had been notified that the president of the United States was on his way, and it was only at the last minute that the president was diverted to the airport and flew back to the East Coast. Well, that reporting was substantiated, of course, by um, not just by Charlie Kirk, but by Jordan Schachtel at the dossier, by Red State, by Jennifer Van Laar over at Red State. And now because of a Freedom of Information Act request to obtain the actual phone calls between police officers at the time, this story has been irrefutably proven to be true. Take a listen to this. We're on the radio. Right now, Fotis is 421. Uh, he's being seen, so we're just kind of waiting to see how this is shaping out. So for everybody's knowledge, he's 421 right now. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what's going on, and we're going to go from there. Okay. That phrase, the POTUS is 421, what does that mean? Well, POTUS means President of the United States. 421 is a police code that means the individual being referenced, POTUS, is either injured or ill. So the, Porta, the POTUS is 421 means President Biden was injured or ill. The story was true. President Biden suffered a serious medical emergency in Las Vegas, and we were not told about it. This was a cover-up staged by President Biden's team, by the people controlling President Biden. This is not speculation. This is not unsubstantiated reporting. This is reality, and we have the proof to substantiate it. And then, of course, we have Biden admitting. He, he went on television and admitted that, yes, he was actually the victim of a coup. He was pushed out. These are, this is Joe Biden in his own words. Take a listen to this. What polls we had showed that it was neck and neck race. would have been down on the wire. But what happened was uh, a number of my Democratic colleagues in the House and Senate thought that I was going to hurt them in the races. And I was concerned if I stayed in the race, that would be the topic. You'd be interviewing me about why did Nancy Pelosi say, why did so? And, uh, and I thought it would be a real distraction. Yeah, he thought it would be a real distraction. The real story, of course, when he says his colleagues in the House and Senate, he means Nancy Pelosi, he means Hakeem Jeffries, and he means Chuck Schumer. The real story. So there was a report a uh, day or two after this coup was staged against Joe Biden that Barack Obama was actually the one who started this coup, that Barack Obama called Joe Biden and said, listen, we even have your vice president, Kamala Harris, on board to invoke the 25th Amendment, meaning this constitutional remedy for to get rid of a president, to get a president out of the Oval Office if that president is no longer mentally competent for the job. Seymour Hirsch actually reported the day, the day after, two days after, that Barack Obama threatened Joe Biden with the 25th Amendment and said that he had built a coalition to make this happen if Joe Biden did not step down. So Joe Biden was blackmailed into stepping down. So when Joe Biden goes on TV and says, a coalition of my colleagues in the House and Senate thought that I would hurt down ballast races, yeah, that's not exactly what happened, but it's just an admission enough that we can see reality. Joe Biden was, in fact, pushed out. He was the victim of a coup, and even Nancy Pelosi admits that this happened. And that, the way that Joe Biden is, quote-unquote, governing now by sending letters to different parts of his administration instead of speaking personally to them, which, of course, makes it very unclear 
Who is writing these letters? Who is signing these letters? Does Joe Biden even know that these letters are being sent? Well, Nancy Pelosi herself asked that question. Take a look at this. I didn't accept a letter as anything but a letter. I mean, I mean, and another, there are some people who are unhappy with the letter. Let me say to you, some said that some people were unhappy with the letter. I'll put it in somebody else's mouth. Because it was a, I don't even know, it didn't sound like Joe Biden to me. It really didn't. So, that, but please tell us what you told President Biden to persuade him to step aside. Well, I've never come, I've never shared any conversations with the President of the United States uh, publicly, no. It's said that he's furious at you, is he? Well, he knows that I love him very much. I understand that you don't want to own this, um, but it is so well reported no. that you were the leader of a pressure campaign. No, I wasn't a leader of any pressure party. Well, let me say things that I didn't do. I didn't call one person. I did not call one person. I could always say to him, I never called. She's such a masterful liar. You don't have to be the one to call. Your people will call. Nancy Pelosi. We know that Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama were behind this. We know this for a fact. And what Nancy Pelosi is doing right now is she's trying, she's raising the question, well, that letter didn't sound like Joe Biden in order to distance herself from being, from having a finger pointed at her and people saying, Nancy Pelosi, you were the one that helped Kamala Harris stage this coup. You and Barack Obama and Kamala Harris staged this coup and forced Joe Biden out of office, which is the most anti-democratic thing I have ever heard in my entire life. They don't just want to silence Joe Biden because they didn't like him anymore. They thought he was a political liability. They don't just want to silence Tulsi Gabbard because she's criticizing the national security state. They don't just want to silence media reports about the Trump assassination attempt, even though we're 30 days out from the attempted murder of the former president of the United States. If they had the opportunity, they would do this to us too. And again, I don't say this to sound hyperbolic. We know that European countries such as the United Kingdom are usually one step ahead of the United States when it comes to this incremental descent into socialism, communism, and tyranny. They adopt things like socialized health care and hate speech laws just a moment before the United States does. Well, we can look to the United Kingdom to see exactly what they are doing to know what the leftists in the United States want to do to us next. To that end, police in the United Kingdom say that their quote-unquote hate speech law even applies to retweets on X, and you can go to jail for a retweet. Take a listen to this. We will throw the full force of the law at people. And whether you're in this country committing crimes on the streets or committing crimes from further afield online, we will come after you. <laughs> from further afield online, what does that mean, sir? Are you saying that here in the United States, if I retweet something that you, a British police officer, don't like, that you will extradite me to charge me under a hate speech law in the United Kingdom? Yeah, you might want to think about that a little bit further before you, before you follow through on that. The last time the British people, or the last time the British government, I should say, tried to take away the rights of American citizens, you lost a war and we created the greatest country the world has ever known. In other words, get lost, you loser.